used it for a hundred different ways. For example, this one, this artificial limestone, if you have a look at it. The first step is natron. So they were able to create both kind of stones, both different words of stones by starting with natron. And th at this time they are not uh, melting it but mixing it with lime and blah 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 blah. It's a long, long visit. And they also used it for mummification that the most famous use of natron is mummification of Ramses. Aloha and welcome back to the Sensible Hippie Podcast. Today we're exploring an intriguing theory about the ancient Egyptian pyramids. It's a compelling speculation, but could natron, a naturally occurring mineral, have been a secret component in constructing these monumental wonders? While this theory isn't proven, it does invite us to rethink ancient ingenuity. Today, we'll be diving into these ideas with our guest, Marcel Fonti. Before we get started, I'd like to thank our podcast Ohana for your continuous support and engagement. If you have any suggestion for guests or topics, or you'd like to join the conversation yourself, leave your ideas in the comments below. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. And if you're feeling generous and would like to show your support monetarily, consider buying me a coffee to keep these fascinating conversations alive. Now, without further ado, let's welcome Marcel Fonti to the show. <laughs> you speak very well English. How come? Uh, watching you too, because I, I <laughs> never learned English. Yeah, really? Yeah, really? yeah, yeah. Wow. Because this is how kids learn English, so it's, a, it's yeah. not a, a magic, so. <laughs> no, but you speak very well. Very well. I mean, you can go on podcasts and talk about your work. That's amazing. Uh -huh. And you never yeah. learned it. So that's amazing. I'm a, I'm a good kid. <laughs> Learning. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, obviously, very much so. So before we get into your natron theory, I'd love for our listeners to get to know you a little bit better. Could you okay. maybe please share yeah, a little bit better. about yourself, your background, and what led you to explore this perspective of this natron theory? Okay. So... My professional background is I'm an IT guy, was, I was, I used to be an IT guy and I stopped that uh, four years ago because I had an IT company and I sold it and I was full of IT and I stopped doing it. And then I had a lot of free time to start traveling and, and then COVID hit. So I didn't start traveling at all. So me and my wife were, were closed down, as everybody else, obviously, and uh, and started to travel online, watching these mystery videos about Egypt and uh, Peru and, and uh, these kind of things, and I ran into what's just yeah, the guy was Jeffrey Drum who has a very good theory about the real function of the pyramids. And not only that, that, that he has this very good theory, he taught me a lesson that you can solve mysteries without any degrees or equipment or just, he was just basically sitting at home and, or okay, he was once in Egypt, but he went back to, I guess, Germany or something, I don't know. And he worked from his armchair, and that was fascinating. And I, I decided that I have so much free time, I will solve a mystery. And I was looking for a good mystery for me to solve. And I just picked up this scoop mark mystery at the unfinished obelisk in Aswan basically randomly, because I could choose anything else. But it was nice looking, it's, it was beautiful, and it was... And the official explanation was kind of stupid, 
to, to hit it with a melon size uh, diary bows to, to make these depressions that, that stupid. So I started to, I, I chose this one, but I didn't know anything about chemistry, nothing at all, nothing. So, uh, I looked around and, and, uh, investigated how modern humanity cuts granite. And I found out it's just water jet, plain water, tap water, it's water jet. So I decided to build a water jet machine from caveman tools and resources, but it failed because it's, it's true that it's tap water, but without any abrasives, but the pressure is so high, it cannot be done with, with caveman tools. Uh, and that was the, the, the turning point to, to try to solve the mystery another way. And I started the chemical way because of Jeffrey Drum, because he talked about the chem chemistry. So, uh, he, he, he showed me a pass without, okay. So he showed me a, a, a pass to, to chemistry and, uh, I think this is the the answer for your first question. I can tell the story on and on. That's okay. <clears throat> or or, yeah, or that's... I just do it. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. So the next, yeah. So I, I investigated how can I do any harm to granite with chemicals. And there is a long list of chemicals that do not work. Acids, alkali, whatever, and granite is very, very hard. So I had to cross out every acid, every alkali, la, 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 except one acid. This is hydrofluoric acid, but it's so strong and dangerous. I crossed it out too, because this, this hydro, hydrofluoric acid is that you, you touch it with your finger and you die because it, it creates an electroshock or something in your nerves. So no, no way. And uh, so all my chemical trials failed for first try. Uh, and then I br brought up my never give up mentality and started to investigate what the heck is granite because it's not granite. It's a chemical compound. And the, it has this, these part, it, you, you can see with your eyes that there are parts in it, particles, and it's not a, a mess. It, it has different ingredients. So I checked the ingredients. I was amazed that 75% of granite is just quartz. It's quartz. And there are these little colorful granite grains inside, but it's glued together with quartz. And, uh, okay, then don't try to, to attack granite. Let's try to attack quartz. Hmm? And I, I run into a German page. It's quartzpage.de and that is the all the chemical reactions of silica, silica. And there is a page that describes uh, this, this chemical reaction I tried, which is if you melt the natron, which is a salt, we can, we can discuss natron later, but just let me finish this sentence. So if you melt this natron thing, it will etch the granite like this, bang. Uh, it will etch not granite, but every form of quartz. This is the definition, every form of quartz. So I set up a, an experiment in my backyard with, a, with, a, with just this grill chimney, like this one, when you light the charcoal in it and put some charcoal on the bottom, put a tin can, put a piece of granite and uh, two spoons of 
nades run in the tin can, close the tin can, charcoal, 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 light it, let it burn down, and open the tin can, and huh, voila, what the, and the, the, the granite was etched so badly, it, 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 and I just publi published it immediately on Twitter, and it, it had a, so 56,000 views when I only had <laughs> 200 followers. This one was, uh, was uh, has been seen by 56,000 people because it's unbelievable. Okay, granite is wow, it's a, it's the hardest thing or uh, more scale seven, eight, nine, ten, blah, 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 blah. it cannot be done. And it, it was the first try was successful. I was lucky. Okay, I was lucky because now I know that I used a closed system when the heat couldn't escape. And I, I'm trying to recreate these, um, these scoop marks, what you can find in S1 near the, the unfinished obelisk. And I have a lot of failures because of the heat escaping all the time. So I will solve that, but I was very lucky that I closed this in a charcoal box, let's say, and, and this 851 de degree Celsius just stuck in there and to do the magic. Well, is that what, what we see on your video on your website the, where you're melting yeah. it and it, wow, that was incredible. Yeah, the, the red one. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. And, and then this is also interesting because I'm pouring it on a, on a surface of the granite slab and nothing happens because of the heat escaping. So it's not like it's, it's just pouring there and, and it, it works. No, it's not. You have to somehow heat up the stone itself. And that, that was my lucky choice to, I heated up the stone because of a lucky moment. I don't know. Uh, yeah. That's incredible. Have you met Jeffrey um, Drum? No, no, no. no. I, I, I think he moved about... into Egypt now, so I he have did. to. Yeah, so I, I will visit him when I'm, I'm going there. Yeah, but have you ever been to G Egypt? No, no. I visited Turkey. It was easier for me. And they have these underground cities, Darinku and the others. That was fascinating as well, but it fits a different culture for sure. Yeah. Oh. By the way, th it was in Turkey when this thing clicked on my head that these uh, uh, carvings, so-called carvings, are always close to salt lakes because these these sites in, around and Derinkuyu and all the other underground cities are very close to salt lakes. And I didn't know at the time what a salt lake produce, what, what the salt lake, lake can give us. And now I know, but it, it was just, and something else, the guy told us, the tour guide that they use this, this salt for va creating vases or something like this. And I, I, I thought that what? Table salt to create raises what it cannot be table salt and it's not. So the salt lakes produce natron and they use the natron to create something in, with these raises. So natron is salt and, and that's where the NA it's, comes from, the salt from natron yeah. for the chemistry yeah. table. But exactly. It, okay. Exactly. But it's not it's it, it Sorry. No, no, I was going to say. It's coming, from the, it's coming from the name of the village where they found Natron because it's called Wadi El Natron. And the two, first two letters of the village is N-A. And, and I don't know why it's called sodium. In my language, it's, it's natrium. Oh. It's not sodium. Oh, really? It's natrium. Yeah. Oh. I had, uh, <laughs> at first, I, I didn't know what you were talking about sodium, sodium. What? It's not you. <laughs> ah, okay. I see. And do you have, um, and don't forget, you can share your screen if you have any photos okay. or videos, things like that. Please, or a map. Means. 
or a map. Okay. Yes. Because I would like to show you this. Uh, yeah. This lake. The map. Salt. Yeah, the salt map and 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 the, and the village. Yeah. Map. Yeah, just a sec. Sure. No, my maps. A revelation of this salt lakes and carvings which happened in Turkey. As you can see, these are the underground cities. Some of them, there are more than 500, <laughs> but that's just, just some of them, these. And these blue marks are the salt lakes around, as you can see. Uh, and all these carved cities are in this uh, wow. rectangle of salt lakes. And this, and you can see, okay, let's zoom in on this this salt lake here it's a big one and the salt is. is everywhere around the lake wow. it's on the shore it's there so this is the salt here you see that the water uh, pulling back and what what's left uh, so the difference between table salt and this salt is that Table salt, NAS, NACL, stays in the water and the water goes back. The salt goes back with the water. That's why beaches are not salty. You are not laying on the salt. You are laying on the sand because regular table salt in ocean's water do not precipitate. It goes with the, with the water. But this salt, this natron, precipitates like this and if the water pulls back it will precipitate everywhere and this is okay so we are we were in turkey and the, this you can collect it in it's an easy easy task to collect it now where the name came came from the na let me type in body Run. Which zoom in? Uh huh. But yeah, not true. And uh, this place is similar to the to that in Turkey. The main difference is that there is so much less water. You don't have to wait for the water to evaporate because it's it has been already evaporated. So you go just there and collect the natron, and this is what the ancient Egyptians did. Let me zoom out. Where is it? Mm. You see, it's it's a volley. Oh. It, it's a whole volley here. And uh, if we wow. zoom out, where is this? Ho oh, oh, It's the delta All of, of the Nile. Yeah, it's uh, the delta of the Nile River. Yeah. And this wow. is kind of an endless source of natron here. By the way, oh. you have natron on the right here as well because it's it's almost everywhere so this this is where the name come from but this is natron as well so if you zoom in in the desert here it's it's natron it's it was it once it was a a sea or ocean and when mm. as the water evaporated natron precipitated on the surface and the other salts went down into the soil so uh, this is wow. natron here That's so you they, they they didn't have to do anything special no. to, to collect natron if they go out it's to the right desert there. it's there it's there yeah it's right there yeah wow is that the same maybe in like salt lake in america do we have that there too? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Every salt like so. behaves this, yeah, behaves this this way because it's it's the the salt that that's that has this property, this precipitation first. So it doesn't matter which salt like. It, uh, there are several kind of stars in the in the lake. We can we can check a salt lake if you want if there is nature around it in in the states. If you know one lake by heart, for example, because uh, it's salt lake. Would be the like only salt, one that I no, Salt Lake. Uh -huh. <laughs> there's, there's one in uh, Utah called Salt Lake. So I wonder. Salt Lake, Utah. Salt Lake City, and I go, guess it's. Yeah. I mean, I mean how Lake. would you know it's nature? Salt Lakes and Deposits. What's that? Salt Lakes and. Aha. Uh -huh. Salt Lakes and Deposits. 
What's that? Ah, it's everywhere. And where is this? Ah, it? it's a, it was. A, a, That's incredible. Yeah, but it, but it's uh, it's Arabic. It's not you talk. It, it, it's, it's, uh, but oh. it's, it's <laughs> <laughs> but it. Let me see where is this. But it's another one. Yes. That's all I can think of at the top of my head. Uh, Death Valley. I wonder if that is in uh, California. So let me try it. Salt Lake City, and it's nearby, I guess. Salt mm -hmm. Lake City. Yeah. And let's zoom out. Ah, there's a bit. Ha ha ha. Yes. Everywhere. So if we zoom in to this spot. Wow. And we, and, it's, and if it's a natural deposit, it's 100% it's nature. Because wow. as I told you, this one, because as I told you, table set does not precipitate from water mm -hmm. easily. And this one is precipitating easily. It's there. Yeah. Wow. Salt that's Lake all, City. That's yeah. all Natron? Wow. That's, that's, that's all wonder... Natron. Yeah. Wow. On the surface, it's almost 100% sure that it's Natron on the surface. So when you collect that, do you have to do anything to remove the debris or you just use it the way it is? Uh, you just use it as it is. It, it, it depends okay. on the thickness, the, but uh, if it's a few inches thick, then you just use it as it is. No How problem. about Death Valley? Let me see. Just out of curiosity, I know that used to be some kind of salt bed of water, I think. Oh, it's everywhere around. Yeah, these spots. I uh, let me see. This is that. Sometimes it zooms in, zooms in. Sometimes it's not. Let's see this that spot here. Huh? Huh? Ha ha ha. Looks like the same. Yeah. Yeah. Incredible. My guess it's natron also. It's okay. it's natron. Because wow. of the of the physical and chemical properties of the different kind of salts, it cannot be table salt. If it's table salt, okay. then something strange happened here. But if mm. it's Yeah. Now how do you know that's not sand and that's salt instead? Sand has a different color and and uh, mm. This is sand, okay. this, this yellowish one. Ah, okay. And it has a, a pattern of precipitation like this. Mm -hmm. This this happens yeah. all the time, these flowers of... It's oh. called efflorescence. Efflorescence. So these are flowers here. Wow, that's incredible. Okay, that's really cool. Mm -hmm. So the ancient Egyptians, they just, they just used it. Now, I wonder who taught them how to do that. How did they, because people don't think that way. They mm -hmm. think that they were primitive people and they use, I don't know, copper and other stones to make these beautiful um, statues. And I've been there recently and the statues are huge. Yeah. They're really huge. My guess is that if every civilization can come up with the idea and usage of fire and they do then they can cook everything <laughs> 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 women cook food men cook stove <laughs> but why not why not you have mm -hmm. the fire you have the nature you have your wife she's cooking you get jealous and you want to cook something <laughs> something <laughs> else and you cook cook a statue <laughs> so i i i cannot see a, a a big step here because inventing the fire is a big step itself and if they can do this the next this next step is not as hard are there any historical records that maybe show natron was used in big projects like the pyramids mm. you mean evidence of of, of this technology yeah yeah uh i think i it, saw on some of your your um uh, on on your website you were shown possibly i think like this pile of 
sand or something could be natron when they were processing their mm, some kind of i don't know artwork i think you have oh the, 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 uh, yeah there is this uh, muriel the tomb yes. tomb of Rick, 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 Rick Meyer, how to say yeah yeah let me let me find this picture because it's fascinating yeah i mean of course we don't know what it is but it could yeah, very yeah. well be I love your website, by the way. I love the domino effect. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, is it this you know, one? I was at, I was at um, Egypt not too long ago, and they did not show us the ob the unfinished obelisk. obelisk. So we we were right there too, but we did not get to see that. Why? I don't know. So I don't you know. Uh, you you are talking about these heaps he here so with this salt these these heaps yes yeah. yes uh -huh. yep yep. Uh -huh. yep yeah that's the ones yeah we don't know exactly if it's natron so it's before etching or it's water glass after etching we don't know but it, my guess yes, is it's after. after etching because it has charcoal contamination in it, these black spots, and because they are touring it here and somewhere down, down here when they are creating the stone blocks. So this, uh, this is very far from the fire. The fire is on the left and they are pouring it here on the right and shipping it to somewhere or something. So yeah, I think we... it's... It's the end product here. Yeah. When we were in Egypt, we saw there was a lot of black soot um, on the walls, on the upper top of the walls, and they told us it was bats. You know, birds, yeah. bats. <laughs> we yes. don't know. So this was before I knew of your work and before I knew of um, Jeffrey Drum. So mm -hmm. I didn't know. So I just said, oh, okay, you know, but yeah. But these, these are very, known. very, very selective bats because they select to urinate in a horizontal line and only in the third room of that red, red pyramid I guess or which one I don't know so they they deliver they deliberately choose just one room and they <laughs> create this distinctive pattern because they love art or something uh, yeah. yeah, and so I guess with your work and Jeffrey Drum's work, I mean, it very well could be um, the chemistry that he's saying that they could have been creating in these sarcophagus-like things could be what they what you were saying, the natron, and doing mm -hmm. those kinds of things. Yeah, sure. Yes. It's yeah. a possibility. They could be doing a lot of things, but that, mm -hmm. that could be one that's incredible. Mm -hmm. So with these, with this natron salt, can you taste the salt? Like if you yeah, were to it's, go there? Yeah, it's bad tasting. Yeah. <laughs> it doesn't yeah. taste like salt. You taste no, it? No, it's, it's smelly. Yeah. Oh, really? Yes. Yeah. So uh, is, is yeah, that it's one called, way? It's called washing, washing soda in Hungarian, if I translate it. So it's, it's a detergent. It's a washing powder. So if you taste the washing powder and you like it, <laughs> so, <laughs> it's, if no. it was, if yeah. you tasted the rock, would it be salty? Which which rock? At the, any rock. It, it, at any, the... any rock? No, any rock. No, but for example, if you taste the pyramid, which I the did, pyramid rock. Yeah, you did? that's yeah. It was another another uh, huge run on on Twitter because I I showed the picture. I'm licking a piece of stone and I didn't see that one. No, was it salty? It, yeah, it's salty. Yeah. Oh, incredible. but it's table salty. It's not this oh. smelly natron, whatever. It's it's table. It's like tasting a, a pizza. Why would it be example. table salt and not the other uh, salt? Uh huh. And uh, there is a, another guy doing great research called J Joseph Davidovich, and what I did, I cracked the code of 
quartz and granite and diorite and volcanic stone. He cracked the code of limestone and he created artificial limestone. And there is a, can I show you the, the article? Huh? Okay. Yeah. Let's reuse this page. What I did, I cracked the code of quartz and granite and diorite and volcanic stone. He cracked the code of limestone and he created artificial limestone. And there is a, can I show you the, the article? Huh? Okay. Yeah. Let's reuse this page. Ah. Yeah. This is what I'm sharing. Pyramids, the formula, the invention of stone. Let me check. Yeah. So this guy come up with the idea. This is the chemical formula that he can create artificial uh, limestone. And he has this chemical reaction as a series of chemical reactions. And at the end, he will get, where is it? And I don't know, but halit here is table, so table and, and, and in start, some steps will give him table salt and the end result is limestone and he created limestone blocks, huge blocks, but it, this is the process. This is the block, several ton blocks he created. This one is the end result, but the property of this feature of this artificial limestone is it's it's salty it tastes salt, like salt wow, because of the chemical re reactions but it's not my work as you can see it's a different stone type and it's a different research i see well that's incredible though so with the natron did they use that for the pyramid you think or just the obelisk or uh, I, they used it a hundred different ways for example this one this artificial limestone if you have a look at it the first step is natron so they were able to create both kind of stones both different words of stones by starting with natron and at this time they are not uh, melting it by mixing it with lime and blah 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 blah, blah. it's a long long reason and they also used it for mummification that the most famous use of natron is mummification of Ramses. Oh. I didn't know that. Really? Uh, because natron will, will make it dry. So it's, yeah, that's it's true. to have the body dry out. I see. So they use natron. Natron. Interesting. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> and they uh, w wash their teeth with natron. This this oh. bad tasting smell. Yeah, they used it this way. For toothpaste. Kind of. Yeah. Okay. And I and think you, know, you mentioned. Yeah. Sorry. You know what's no, no. In, what's interesting that. We eat natron if we eat pastry and we eat bread because <laughs> that's, that's fascinating because baking soda turns into natron in the oven. Really? Uh, yeah, this is the, the chemical reaction is this baking soda uh, releasing CO2 to make bubbles in the bread while turning into natron. Wow. Yeah, that's true. That's true. That's incredible. It's just a small that. amount because you only use a small amount of baking powder and it releases a lot of CO2. But the end of the end of the day, you eat a small amount of natron every day. <laughs> wow. That's incredible. And I think you, you also talked about them. It makes glass. Yeah, glass making. Glass is not nothing else than natron 
plus limestone plus what is this uh, sand. Yeah. If you cook these two te together on the already mentioned 851 degrees Celsius, you will get glass. Yes. Incredible. It's incredible. It's very much needed for glass making. Nice. It's the main ingredient for glass making. You cannot create glass without natron. Have you made anything with glass? No, not really. Uh, it's, it's just enough for me to, to follow this stone path because it's so complicated. It's so diverse now. I'll, in my next life, I will create glass, I guess. I seen what you created with the, um, the stone. You made like a remote mm -hmm. control for the game. No, that's what, that's not what, that's not, that was not me. Somebody from the community made it, <laughs> but it's oh. funny. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, yes, that's not it is. My, I, I cast these small bastards. The little statues mm, and stuff. Yeah, that's incredible. Yeah. So after you cook it, so you grab salt, granite, and it can be a whole chunk of rock of granite. Cook it. Yeah. And then after, I don't know how long it takes to get to 800 and uh, something. Yeah. So basically charcoal will go up to 1000 degrees easily. So you have this 851 in, a, in, in five minutes or something. I, I, I don't know because it? it's so hot back then that, yeah. And I, I let it burn down. So I, I really don't know what's, how fast the reaction goes because it's so hot. I, I cannot open it. So I usually wait for the charcoal to burn down. And it's an hour or two, but it's possible that the magic happens in five minutes. I don't know. Wow. No. And then. Yeah. Sorry. No, go ahead. No, no. Uh, I, I, I just realized that, uh, I have to show you something, something fresh from yesterday. Because. Uh, it's, uh, there is a possibility that I inadvertently run into the recipe, a formula of Egyptian blue. You know, the color they used everywhere, the, the painting yes. they used everywhere mm -hmm. and, and, yep. and people don't know, people don't know how it was created, but it is as the photo. Can you see my photos? Yeah, I can. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. These are the many, many experiments we did. And down here somewhere, there is a strange one where I visited a ceramist and used his big oven and put the red granite in the big oven. Wow. And that's here what we you are. Need? That's uh, yes. The, these are the etchings, the, the actual, uh, yeah, kind of. And, and this color. So let me show you the, the experiment. This is the big oven and, uh, this is the temperature it's going up. And I put the, the two, I put two granite slabs in there. The black one is from South Africa. It's called the uh, Impala granite. And the red one is red granite. I don't know where is it from. I, it's just from the cemetery. I don't know. And. The interesting thing, I, I wanted to create a scoop mark below these iron tubes because there is somewhere, yeah, here you can see I'm putting, this is natron salt putting into these tubes. And I, I hope, I, I hoped that, uh, this setup, this is the fire will etch the stone stone below the tube. But it's just the opposite. As you can see, it did not harm the stone below the tube. It etched it everywhere where natron ran out. And what I wanted to show you, and it's new discovery from yesterday. Someone told me this is the way to create Egyptian blue. Because on Wikipedia, there is a A half description, a half good description, how 
archaeologists think that this color was created and part of it is that they somehow burned natron can i find this just uh, you have big scissors you will cut out <laughs> let me show you the what the guy sh showed me when i wrote about this this is the failure yeah yeah i failed i failed but but this is this is the part when he did you accidentally create uh egyptian blue and i uh, told him that i don't know what is it and i didn't but then uh, he showed me the exact description of Egyptian, how to make Egyptian blue from Wikipedia. And it's an, it is now generally regarded as a multi-phase material that was produced by, and this is the is it, heating together quartz, quartz sand, something co from copper, calcium carbonate is natron, and a small amount of ash. Now my Egyptian blue is heating together quartz but not sand quartz inside granite and i guess copper was inside granite this is natron and the result is did i show i didn't show this i guess we are uh-huh you yeah oh or no i where is the screen sharing? No, I didn't share this. Okay, you will have to use your scissors because I wanted to show. Let me repeat this. What is it? This one. Yeah. This this is what I. So quote. It is now generally regarded as a multi-phase material that was produced by heating together quartz, copper, and calcium carbonate. And this is what I'm sharing now, I hope. Yeah, and a small amount of ash. Now the, the difference is that I heated together quartz from granite, copper from granite, and natron. And this was the end result I, I showed you. I have to go back with the screen sharing. So they they were close, but I'm closer, I think, because it's it's there. It's yeah, I see it. Yeah, it came out from the red granite. So copper is part of this red granite kind of stone. Wow, I can see like copper does make that kind of a color. Yes, when it's yeah. Mm -hmm. Wow, that's beautiful. <laughs> yeah. It's a that's beautiful incredible. failure. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the color's beautiful. Yeah. And, excuse me, and the scoop marks. Um, so, so a lot of these um, stones, like the H stones, they're like pillowy sometimes. We see yes. them kind of beveled mm -hmm. a little. Is that because it's from some kind of mold, maybe? Is that what you're thinking, or? If you use something soft as a mold, like textile, textile, or leather, yeah, it can be pillowish. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Otherwise, you would have to use some kind of scoop to make those scoop marks. Right. No. Here you can see on in my picture that granite was edged. And this part, the blue part, is soft. And you can scoop it out or hammer it out. And you will have the depression when you remove the, the, the blue part. So this is a failed scoop mark experiment only because I wanted the scoop mark to, to appear up here, up, up here, <laughs> but it didn't. 
bit nature and escape than as everything. So this <laughs> blue bluish part could be would be uh, the scoop mark if I had removed this blue thing from here. And if and if if you repeat the process, it will go deeper and deeper and deeper. Let me show the scoop marks. It has to be done while it's soft. Obviously. Yeah. At I'll, least it's I'll softer, softer than granite. Not okay. soft, but a little bit. So is yeah. that movable? Are you allowed? Are you able, able to it fly it in, in any way at all, or no? No, you cannot. Move, move what? You can uh, move the the blue part. Is it movable? Pliable? Like, can you shape it? Oh right, no, it's 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 not. It's just a little bit softer than granite, but it's hard. Okay. You have to use the the pounding okay. stones to to crush it. Oh. So, but this this is easy to crush compared to granite. So, if you have these melon sized stones, and you, you use it for crushing, why don't you crush something you can ca ca do it? Something you can really can break instead of granite. If you're hitting the granite, it's mind. It's it's stupid but you, if you hit this this blue part it's easy to crash and you can remove it and you will go down and down and down with every now here we are yeah we are talking about these scoop marks yes mm -hmm. yes yes and so you cannot see it you cannot see it being a different color but after a few thousand years i guess all the the edged parts now this is the part when it opens on a new page oh so okay um, i hope we can see yeah it's, it's good you, you, we can see it here so imagine that you move some kind of equipment from this mural from square to square and you edge the granite from square to square and other people coming after you and crushing this uh, bluish thing and you you go with these scoop marks down and down and down and you can see on the walls that this was the case here they were just done doing the same etching process over and over and over again and go down deep here in the pit Yeah. Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> so some of the um, uh, stones, they look like they are molded some, sometimes. My my husband mm -hmm. does, um, used to do concrete. So he, mm -hmm. he used to say a long time ago, it looks like when it was a liquid stone and they used a trowel, which is a tool, and they, mm -hmm. shaped, they shaped it, which gave them, because with the concrete you can make a beveled edges and so he mm -hmm. saw that and he said it looks like what do we do concrete same thing yeah it's, it's the beveled work. Yeah. Yeah, yeah 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 the same thing but you know they were talking about talking about you know they were slaves that were moving it with with ropes and things like that and it just didn't seem that way no it's stupid no you no 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 uh you can you can answer every question if the those big stones were cast right into the wall not cast yeah, separately, but exactly. into the wall. Exactly. Precision. How can you reach a precision that you cannot finger, find, uh, cannot insert a razor blade between the stones yep. by yep. Yep. casting in place? How can you avoid ever lifting 20 ton blocks by casting in place and never moving it? And that's a trend. So every question can be answered with this simple idea of casting in place right into the wall exactly and why are my... the sh why are the shapes so different because you cast it in the water yeah exactly my husband said that a long time ago probably 30 years ago he said the same thing that because he used to do um concrete walls too for mm -hmm. houses like basements so he would do the same thing he would trench you know build the trench put the walls up and then pour the liquid concrete in there 
then remove the cast and there you go and you can shape it yeah so yes mm -hmm. it's the same idea yeah so and it's it's it, it's it's also stupid to 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 think about that they are always asking how how the ceiling of your house the how the concrete ceiling of the house was put up there oh my god it's 60 tons by pouring guys by pouring the concrete that's it uh -huh. and the shape of the ceiling oh it's so preci precise and <gasps> It's exactly. Stupid. Yeah. When, because he has to use chemicals, like I, for, I don't remember. I'm not a concrete person, but lime and things like that to harden it. Mm -hmm. But they just before it hardens 100, percent they can they work remove, on it. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And they mold it and everything, mm -hmm. etch it, yes. they do all of that. Yes. Exactly the same thing. And uh, so, let me show you something from Peru. Well, I hope I will find mm -hmm. it when they. Oops, when they just uh, play dog some animal figurines on it. How will I find this? Oh my God. <laughs> but a lot of the scientific um, community, they don't agree with that. They... Yeah, because they, <sighs> okay, that, that's a good question again. Uh, this is the question of how can you tell that the stone is artificial or not? Mm, okay. And it's not easy. It's mm. if you if you use the standard tools like mass spectrometry and uh, was that in English? Uh, there is a XFR. What's that? It's a X-ray fluorescence. I don't know it in English. Okay, but if they use these things, uh, these are half blind, and they have to start the investigation with an assumption that the stone is wow i had this already have a look at this mm -hmm. am i showing the right screen or what i'm sh yes in the middle can you see mm -hmm. this yes yeah uh, this this wall was kept in place by using wooden what's that Wood. Like a frame? Yeah. Well, I, can't, I can't remember the word. Okay. Anyway, I'm not, I was not looking for this one. Anyway, I was looking for what you were talking about. What I'm looking for. C c concrete? We were looking at molding? Ah, uh, yes. Yeah. Ah, yep. Yeah, th this is one. This is one example of an Inca stone, mm -hmm. which has a stone inside. That that is that's beautiful as well. And there is another yeah. one, stony stone. So oh, it's yes. cast. But I was looking for an example. I think Peru. Peru, yeah, but Inca. You said Inca. Inca, yeah. Yeah, and these are my photos. I it it will not find. It why typing any keywords that's me it's okay <laughs> hoo, 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 hoo. you went to inca yeah i was there wow before covid this is turkey ah, lucky uh this is wow that's that ah. one. Ha. have a look at this yes do you ah. think these monkeys were created by removing one centimeter of stone from the whole stone that's or, hard to or, do. Yeah, or it was plastered. There. By the way, somebody carved this this second animal here. This this is carved. Ah, it looks different. But, yeah, but it's look it looks different and he gave mm -hmm. up and didn't do the the same to, to, to carve the whole stone. He yes. just carved this this place and left it there. But these are protruding very well. This is so according to my husband, when he looks at this because he's done concrete, he said it. He will tell you it looks like it's molded. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. It's it's all beveled. You can see the trowel marks, the tool marks in there. You can mm -hmm. see all of that, and and it's all cut, all beveled. That's that is definitely like concrete work. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. 
And I'm adding yeah. to this that maybe these small monkeys can be play dog there oh, yeah. afterwards. So there yes. was a stone yes. and someone exactly. came here and just pressed it. Pressed, pressed it, it right in. Yeah. When it's wet. Yes. Yes. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yes. You can see the tool marks. Yeah. Yeah. And you can see some, so it's, if it's pressed later, you can see it's slightly different. The, the, the monkeys are slightly different than the stone. Mm hmm a little bit lighter, mm -hmm. so it's not the same mix. It's an next. Let's stop this. It's another mix later, and with mm -hmm. some changes, in some color difference. So they probably use some kind of natron technology there too. They, did they have a lot of natron available at hand? Yeah, and I, oh. I identified two sources already. One of the sources, let me go back to the map. So, so knowing this natron actually changes a lot of our, or should change a lot of our thinking of our ancient technologies. Absolutely. People, yeah. Absolutely. Some civilizations realize it can be used for glass making, others mm -hmm. realize it can be used for stone making. What's the difference? We believe in glass and we don't believe in artificial stone. Why? What's the main difference? Mm -hmm. Let's go to, uh, by the way, we are in Bolivia now. Let's just have a look at this patch. I will tell you what, how large is it? How large is it? How, how is it Lake Titicaca? No, it's it's uh, below. It's f south. It's the, on the south from Lake Titicaca. So this one here is, it's a 100 kilometer wide salt patch. It's it's dry. It's 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 a it's a patch of natron. <laughs> oh, let me do my that if go. Off. How can I go back to this way? Ah, yeah. So this is a 100 kilometer wide natron patch in Bolivia. Wow. <laughs> okay, but back to Lake Titicaca. Okay, let's do Lake Titicaca. It's, oops, what happened? What's that? What is that? Ah, put it right. I, I have the Windows menu came up or something. Go away. <laughs> How can I close this shit? No. <laughs> you ah, first words. I I clicked somewhere <laughs> and I have I'm 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 getting Microsoft advertisement. Okay, so back to the map. <laughs> so this is Lake Titicaca, and I I was lucky to be there as well, but I didn't mm. know what I was looking for. So I I didn't know about shit about stones when I was there. And let's <laughs> see Tiwanaku. It's in Bolivia. And the closest natron source is this spot. What? So it, the, the, the distance is like 20 kilometers or something. Let's zoom in. It's there. That's, that's there. Wow. It's a lake. It's a dried lake again. Uh, so the Lake Titicaca is surrounded by natron spots. Mm -hmm. And if we go up to Cusco, because this is what I wanted to show you, there are several sources of unlimited natron here. You see this blue marker. It's in the middle of Oliantai Tambo, bah, Machu Picchu. What's that? Yes. Puka, puka, muka, muka. Cusco, and this one is Salinas de Maras, or how to say, it's a salt evaporation site, several thousand years old, huge, high capacity. Here we are, and these are, these are the salt ponds they are using for several millennia. 
This is one of the sources they could use to have unlimited neutron, but I identified another one, which is, and this was a fascinating story again. The soil is salty here, all around the soil itself, which means your plants are collecting sodium because it's in the salt. The, the plants are sodium resistant here up in the mountains, like what's this small, forget the name of this seed, the Tahasi seed from Peru, key, key. I don't know, whatever. So the plants accumulate sodium and if you burn these plants, you will also have nitrogen in the Uresh. That's fascinating. You you cannot avoid because yeah. it's in the plants. Quinoa, yeah. I remember now. Quinoa, Quinoa yes. Quinoa. Okay. Quinoa is a special plant. It's not annual, so you have to. It's growing fast. It's not annual. You harvest the seeds, and you have a lot of quinoa plants as a waste. And if you burn that, you can also produce natron. And it's a specialty of this region. It's just unique here in Peru, up in the mountains here. Wow. Well, that's incredible. Yeah. I and and not, it's, incredible it's not only work. quinoa. All the plants there are salt resistant, so accumulating sodium, all of them. Ah. That's incredible. Yeah. I think you're doing fascinating work, really, really fascinating. And I appreciate your time today, taking your time to talk to us here. Um, and I, I hope that we can talk again. Sure. Um, yeah, I'm ready to do it. <laughs> I, I, what do you hope? I have a new discovery every day, so we can That's talk. amazing. Yeah. I know. I, I, what, what hopes do you have for people taking away this natron theory and your research into these uh, ancient building techniques? What, what do you want people to come away with this? Is there a message maybe? Message? Is something mm. you want people to walk away with? Uh, kind of motto. The motto is Ancient people were not dumb. We Absolutely. think they were, but they were not. And they were able finding ways to do things with their knowledge. So it's better to investigate these theories in practice to find out that we are the same humans. If, if they were dumb, we are dumb. Are we dumb? Yes. We can, but it's just ridiculous to 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 think that they were so dumb they did everything with sticks and and bones. That's stupid. Yeah, yeah. I I think it, it's just a lost technology. Maybe during the dark ages, I think it's just a lost technology. Mm -hmm. So one more question: Do you do you think the the pyramids are much older than what we think they are? older than 6,000 years? Uh, there is this burial I showed you, and this one is not that old. So the technology was known a few thousand years ago, not several tens, dozen, thousand years ago. It was now well known when that mural, that mural was painted. But anyway, there is an easy, easy way to forget these technologies. And this is a civilization collection. And that's it. And by the way, the way Inca casts these huge stones is a civilization killer. Because you need wood ash. A lot of... It's incredible amount of wood ash to cast those walls, for example, in Saxe 
So when you cut down all the trees and burn everything, you will end up with nothing. Your civilization collapses, people go away, and there is nobody there any, anymore who knows the technology. Puff. I think that's what happened with the Mayan. We, we visited the mm -hmm. Mayan um, many times, and that's one of the stories they told us, that they, civilization. the civilization cut down all the trees, mm -hmm. all the trees. Mm -hmm. And eventually, everything went away, just like you said, the whole civilization, because it connects to everything. Yeah. You know, food, water, fire, all of that comes from that. And think about so this, right. this aspect. Maybe they could still grow some crops so they they could eat but there was a civilization uh, an industry that ran out of source materials you had the building industry and you are there and there is no more wood ash anymore you cannot build anything that's a corruption yeah and the sa strange thing in egypt is that when they reached this point there was a guide guy who called Imhotep, who invented the artificial limestone and, and they could switch the technology to uh, from granite to limestone and they survived and they were able to continue the, the building uh, infrastructure and the building habit or something because they switched from wood ash to something else. But these guys in Peru, they ran out of wood ash and died. Interesting. Is that because they use the trees yeah, to they, heat up? Yeah. Mm -hmm. and, and to cast the stones. So they use the, the ash to, cast, to, to mix it with water glass and cast the stones. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Wow. Well, can you tell our listeners where they can find you and your work and any updates? Yeah, the, yeah. the easiest is nisrantauri.com. This is my website and all the links and connections are there, if, including my Twitter handle. It's on the bottom of the page. So nisrantauri.com. Awesome. Thank you so much. I really Thank you. appreciate it. And that brings us to an end of another episode of the Sensible Hippie Podcast. I want to thank my special guest, Marcel Fonti, for his amazing insights into the Natron Theory. A big mahalo to all of our podcast ohana. And remember to follow us, share this episode, and give a thumbs up if you've enjoyed our discussion. And hit that subscribe button. And if you feel moved to support our community further, consider making a donation Every contribution helps to bring more captivating content your way. Until the next time, remember, stay curious and always take life with a grain of salt. Bye. I'm falling asleep to all the peace that you keep. Still trying to waste some time. Yeah, trying to lose your mind. Trying to lose your mind